Hey everybody, it's Niall Livesey here with Pure and Tech. Today we're doing something a little different. I know we've only done a few episodes of this show so far, but this is one that I really was kind of hoping to be doing more of. You know, there's a lot of good YouTubers out there, actually a lot of great YouTubers out there who do amazing things with new tech. And the problem is we don't get things very often and we also don't get them when they are launched. So, I mean, the problem with tech these days is if you don't have the latest and greatest as soon as it comes out, you're kind of out of luck. You want to know about it right away. So it is a little hard for us to do reviews on new things, but I always had a feeling I wanted to be doing more old stuff, things that you might not find every day. So we're starting off that little series of PRN Tech with something that I am quite excited about. Here on my left, or your right on the screen here, is a computer that uh, I actually never thought I'd be looking for specifically, but it came into my life and now here it is. This is, it's nothing special, this is an IBM ThinkPad X60. Uh, it's not even the best one in the X, you know, 6X kind of lineup, but I ended up picking it up anyway. There's a couple of reasons why I picked up this computer, and I'll tell you. You might be surprised that I actually used to work for IBM. And during that time, I was always fascinated by the hardware. I got into the company after Big Blue started getting out of hardware. They had already sold off their computer business to Lenovo and then uh, server stuff. I mean, it was still technically IBM, but they've already phased that out and uh, pretty much sold it off as well. So the products that I was using were always Lenovo and IBM was very particular about the hardware that they used. Everything had to still be either Lenovo or IBM. And I had the chance to use a lot of old stuff. And in fact, uh, shortly after I left IBM, uh, during the process I was there and then you know, kind of after I had left, I had bought some servers. There was no use for them, but I bought them. They were huge, massive things that uh, pretty much couldn't run much. You know, they were uh, pretty old servers, but they were nice. They, they they had a good design to them. I liked them, and I was trying to kind of refurbish them of sorts and uh, never really went the way that I wanted it to. But the point is, here we are six years after I worked for them, and I finally have my own IBM ThinkPad because obviously the one that I had from IBM was returned when I left. And this one's kind of special. I mean, this X series is a convertible tablet. This is kind of before the tablets we know today. But the whole point is you can flip the screen around, lock it down. There's actually a button here to lock it in, and then you can use it. And this isn't just a touch screen, right? Not today's kind of tablets where you use your fingers. This actually uses a Wacom tablet screen size here. So the tablet itself is pretty much the highest quality Surface tablets that you can get. Uh, you know, Wacom has been making tablets for quite some time. They're, I think, the number one choice when people are looking at doing Photoshop work, Illustrator work, anything that requires an actual pen input on a computer, they'll buy a Wacom, and this comes with it built in. Now, when I got it, it uh, you know we live in Quebec now, so everything is in French. So the version of Windows 7, which was actually installed in it, was uh, was professional. You can't switch it to Windows uh, in English. So I had to get a new hard drive, and I put a 240 gig SSD in here, which really blows the specs away. This again isn't sort of the best version of the X60 you could get. It is a 1.66 gigahertz Intel Core Duo, not even the Core 2. So it is a x86 base processor. And uh, you know, 1.66 gigahertz, it's pretty slow. My iPhone is faster. Most cell phones these days have way more power than this little computer here, but it works. And not only does it work, it's got Windows 10. I put Windows 10 on here. And I'm gonna just swipe my fingerprint and it should log us in right away. And uh, I'm really impressed that this computer not only is in phenomenal shape, given this really wasn't anything too special from IBM or any manufacturer at the time. You know, a lot of these got beaten up. But I'm really impressed that it came out in 2007. Here we are in 2018, and it works considerably well for its age. And uh, the fact that you can get Windows 10 on it really, you know, kind of helps. I mean, if you're looking at getting a relatively cheap computer and you don't want to be spending too much for it, then what better way than getting something like this? So it's a little slow, I will admit. It's uh, definitely nowhere near the speed of our 2017 iMac here, the 21 uh, inch iMac that we have. It's faster in every regard. And even like I said, the iPhone is way faster, but I think that this is such a cool little device, and especially running Windows 10, it's up to date and it works. And with the Windows 10, this is the first time I've used Windows 10, but when you do flip it in to tablet mode, and I, again, you can lock it in, you know, you can see a little bit on the screen here, it's kind of flipped the wrong way. I installed the drivers to be able to switch the screen over so you can actually use it the way that IBM intended to use it originally. You get the little pencil here, you can pull it out, and then you can put Windows in to tablet mode. 
So for example, now again, I haven't really had a lot of chance to get into the systems here and figure out what else you could really do with Windows 10 being the first time I'm using it. But when you go into the pen and ink workspace, I believe they call it, you can have a sketch pad. And this works really, really well. I can say, welcome to PRN Tech. And you can see it's quick. It actually, this writes really well. Uh, way better than using the 3D, I think it's 3D Paint. Now they've killed off Microsoft Paint and the 3D one just is too process intensive for this little computer. There's like a little eraser on the back. You can get rid of everything. So sure, I mean, this isn't gonna be replacing my iMac. This is really just a fun little toy that I can play with. And I'm really impressed that you can get things like Windows 10 on here. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot more other than Windows 10 and then the base installed applications for it. But it works and it works pretty well. I mean, how many computers can you say are 11 years old and can run the latest operating system? I don't know how many computers I've built in my life, five, six, seven of them, and I guarantee you none of them. And those were like hardcore, super gaming computers. One of the, actually the last one I had had 64 gigs of RAM, a 60 gig solid state with four terabytes of internal storage, a 3.07 gigahertz processor, that would probably still run Windows 10, no problem, but it, it would be obsolete. It was obsolete about a year and a half after I sold it. And sure, this thing is obsolete. Nobody would ever buy this if they were sane, but whoever said I was. So it's actually a fun little computer. I'm really impressed with it. And if you, uh, if you like IBM hardware, like I do, which I know is kind of a weird thing, but if you do like it, it's, you know, it's about as IBM as you can get. You don't have an actual trackpad. It's just the little track button here, their little nipple, and uh, everything else works pretty well. It's pretty consistent with IBM design language and really their ruggedness from the time. And as I said, you know, these, uh, when looking online, can be pretty beaten up. And specifically around here, you know, there's a little PCI uh, Express slot here that you could put in like a, I don't know, an Ethernet adapter or something, maybe even a Bluetooth card might be helpful for this, but it's thin plastic here. So these are usually broken along here. Uh, actually a little nipple here to keep the screen resting was broken. So I just MacGyvered my way to fix that. But uh, you know, for the most part, these are relatively beaten up by the time you're looking at them. But if you find one in good shape like this, you know, I mean, you can still use it with the latest operating system and the battery life too is pretty good considering it's a laptop. You kind of expect to be able to use it for uh, on the go kind of things. And I can get, I don't know, about two hours of use out of it. I'm basically using this just sitting on the couch, writing articles, talking about, uh, you know, replying to comments and things and doing very light research. When I don't want to be sitting here in the studio office using the iMac, this now gives me the ability to have a little bit more screen real estate. I hate using my iPhone to be doing research and especially replying to comments. You might notice on the, on the YouTube channel, I'll reply to one comment maybe randomly and uh, all the old ones still haven't been replied to. It's because I'm doing it from the phone. And I just really don't like it. So having something like this actually works really well. And like I said, I'm very impressed with the overall condition this computer is in. And uh, would I trade it? Probably not. I think this is gonna be a computer that's gonna sit on my shelf. I'm gonna use it. And then, you know, when things I guess start really breaking down when the fan stops working and maybe the screen stops working, the digitizers break down, then yeah, maybe at that point, I'll, uh, I'll look for something else, but I'm really impressed. A 11 year old computer that really isn't special at all. Surprise wasn't beaten even worse. And especially with the hinge, you know, most laptops have two hinges on either side so that when you, you, know, you can pull it up from the lid, they'll work. But this just has this little one here that swivels around. And I'm impressed not only does it still swivel properly and this still folds up and down, but it hasn't broken because of abuse, and I mean, it's not even abuse. You could just break it because it's brittle. So it's in really great shape. So I, I'm really happy with it. The fact that it runs Windows 10, pretty cool. And if you want to, I mean, if you, I don't know if you find one of these, this isn't really the best one to get. Like I said, the X60 is uh, relatively underpowered. If you get the X61s, then they use a uh, dual core, right? You can get a 64 bit CPU with it. So if you're looking for that, get the X61, and then also you can have a 1440 by 1050 resolution, I believe it is, that is the one that all the enthusiasts who are looking at these wanna get, because it has more resolution, a little bit better, uh, and it looks a little crisper. So 
look for that. I, I believe the uh, X60 ones also, you could have gotten like 1.8, maybe two gigahertz at the most, and then you can upgrade those to eight gigs of RAM. Whereas this one is, it's technically limited to four, but I've been uh, researching it and you can only have three that will register on it. So that's what it says on this. It only says that it's got three gigs of RAM. But do what I did, put an SSD in it, it's pretty quick. So gets the job done, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, I hope you guys are kind of interested in this kind of stuff too, because you know, I mean, tech's pretty obsolete. That's the problem with tech these days, is it has such a short shelf life, but I think there's, it's interesting, maybe not value to most people, but I think it's interesting to be able to take a look at different products like this. And uh, I'm glad that we were able to share it with you today. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this little computer, or if you want to know more about the X60 Lenovo here, you can leave a comment below and uh, let us know what you think. I don't know how many videos we're going to be doing on things like this. It's really if I just find something. So don't expect a whole lot from PRN Tech at this time, but we do have a few things in the pipeline. So if you're coming over from Test Drive, don't worry, we still do Test Drive. We're still doing it every week, but we want to branch out and do a little bit more because the channel is Perpetual Radio, not Test Drive. Until next time, Take care.